Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by the 2013 Hyundai Sonata. Learn more at HyundaiSonata.com. Well, we hope you had a great weekend. Welcome to a new week of AutoLine Daily. And now, let's get to the news. Anyone who lives in the United States definitely has noticed that the price of gasoline shot up dramatically in the last month. And that's because speculators have jumped back into the market in a big way. They expect higher prices because some East Coast refineries are shutting down permanently and some for maintenance. And it's because of record exports of gasoline, especially to Brazil and Venezuela. Tight supplies are a magnet for speculators who place bets that prices will go even higher. Citroen has been selling an MPV for years called the Picasso. Looks like Picasso to us, but they call it Picasso. It's met with moderate success, but if you ask me, it's always looked a little goofy. But now the company is getting rid of the fishbowl look with this good looking concept that it's going to unveil at the Geneva show next month. Citroen calls it the Technospace or Technospas and says it uses a new modular platform that's lightweight and space efficient. We wanted to show you what it looks like, but now we're all going to have to wait until Citroen releases more details. The Chinese car industry is growing by spectacular numbers again. Despite worries of a slowdown last year, sales last month hit 2.3 million units, and that's up an astonishing 46% compared to a year ago. Production was up over 50%, hitting almost 2 million units, and that is amazing growth. Ford wants its dealerships to look as gleamingly new as possible. It's telling its dealers it will match, dollar for dollar, up to $750,000 in upgrades to their stores in the U.S. Even so, Ward's Auto World reports that the outgoing president of the National Automobile Dealers Association, Bill Underreiner, says automakers need to butt out of dealers' businesses. He criticized these kinds of renovation programs because they make all dealerships look alike and they rarely pay off. Holden unveiled the redesigned version of its rear-wheel drive VF Commodore sedan, which will make its way to the U.S. as the much-awaited Chevrolet SS. The new sedan features lightweight aluminum panels, new exterior design, and a more sophisticated interior. Unfortunately, we're not given any information on what engine or transmission will go in it, so we're just going to have to stare at these pictures and imagine a Chevy badge on the grill. Subaru is giving us a look into its design and technology future with this tease for the Visiv concept crossover, which debuts next month at the Geneva Motor Show. The name Visiv comes from the phrase vision for innovation that Subaru suggests is the brand's new direction. Also set to make its debut at the Geneva Motor Show from Subaru is the Outback with Subaru's Boxer Diesel mated to a CVT. I think that could be a killer combination. CVTs provide terrific real-world fuel economy and so do diesels. Together, the two could make a really nice package. Coming up next, I'm going to take a look at the biggest problem facing the UAW. It's running out of money. Proven on the track and on roads around the world, Borg Warner turbochargers improve fuel economy and reduce emissions without sacrificing performance. Borg Warner, official turbocharger supplier to the IZOD IndyCar Series. And now it's time for my viewpoint. Today's topic the labor movement. The UAW is facing an existential threat because it's running out of money. It once had a monopoly on automotive labor in the United States and Canada, but not anymore. While Asian and European automakers added millions of units of capacity in the United States and Canada, the union has failed to organize any of their plants, not one. And the same goes for suppliers who now have many fewer union workers or even none at all. 
and it's only getting worse, new hires at GM, Ford, and Chrysler are paid half as much as legacy workers. Since union dues are assessed at two hours pay per month, every new hire means the union gets half as many dues. Yet the union is already dipping into its savings to pay for its operational expenses because it's not collecting enough dues. Another dilemma, GM, Ford, and Chrysler gave the union over $50 billion in cash and stock to manage its Voluntary Employee Beneficiary Association, the VEBA, which provides health benefits to retirees. That's a lot of money, but it's not enough. According to the latest papers filed with the government, the VEBA is more than $30 billion short of covering its obligations. A year ago, the shortfall was $20 billion. Now, where is the union going to come up with that kind of money? And the state of Michigan, home to the UAW, just became a right-to-work state. Simply explained, that means no one can be forced to join a union or pay union dues or fees. Now, most UAW members will choose to remain in the union and pay their dues, but some people will drop out. Now, before the anti-union crowd rubs its hands in glee, watch out. The UAW is mortally wounded and will likely lash out. I think the contract negotiations in 2014 could become extremely contentious, and it will ramp up the rhetoric against the transplants as well. Obviously, the union has to do something because it's pretty obvious it's only a matter of time before the UAW runs out of money. And that's my viewpoint for today. And I want to thank you for having tuned in, and I hope to see you back here again tomorrow.